Hey, Mark, the guitar guy here. It is Q&A Friday, which means the questions that you guys have for me to ask, um, I can actually get on top of those and actually let you know what's going on with those. So it is Friday, so let's get on with that right now. And we've got a cool question here from one of the viewers that's uh, put a comment down on the YouTube there. Jordan Finn. Jordan says, hey, Mark, love your vids. This question isn't necessarily related to using the, a plectrum. However, I've been trying to expand my knowledge beyond just basic chords when playing guitar. I'm trying to discover obscure chords and riffs, runs, for lack of a better term. Um, do you have any advice as to where to begin in this journey? I suppose it's more of a music theory question. Thanks so much, keep rocking. I will keep rocking, I will. Okay, Jordan, so what I'm gonna talk about now is, um, I guess, my journey when it comes to these other chords, and it's the same with riffs. Uh, riffs, you're right, it is more of a music theory thing in a lot of ways, but the chord side of thing is kind of interesting. What I found is there's, there's thousands of chords out there and it can get quite overwhelming. But for example, when I would hear a chord and when I'd work something out, I'd hear something and I'd hear a particular sound about a chord that I'd really like. I'd try and find out how to play that particular chord and I'd add that to my repertoire. So what it's, the best way to describe it is chord substitutions. Like for example, you, my awesomizing chords series, which is out there if you want to look at some of that stuff, it's got different variations on just playing, for example, a D chord. You can play it. Sometimes you can get away with playing some other different types of Ds to make them more interesting sounding. Now that's basically what awesomizing chords is or chord substitutions. So um, I remember once I learned a chord progression and it went A, B minor, C sharp minor and then D and it just repeated that over and over but they what they did was it gave me some alternate versions and this is out of a magazine on how to do exactly the same chords and it gave me that version which is basically like an A major 7, A major 9 and then a B minor 7th you have got a C sharp minor open which is the one we learnt in my opening uh, my crash was it crash chords uh, Dave Matthews chords and then the last chord was a D and you can do a like D major 7th or you can do D major 7th like that and then you've got substitutions, you've got a variation. So instead of just doing A, you can go, you've got So you've got a variation there which is a little bit nicer sounding maybe to you. Maybe that's not nice sounding, You can it, it's up to you. You might hear a chord. This is one chord that I, I absolutely, when I heard it, I just about lost my eep when I heard this chord. It's this chord here. It's basically an A, uh, a a flat minor, G sharp minor, but it's got these other really close notes in there, really close notes. Um, I'll give you that chord actually because it's kind of a fun one to do. So instead of doing, how often do you do a G sharp minor? But in this case, you sometimes do and you will get to use this chord. So um, I'll start with the first finger on the bottom string, second fret, second finger is on the third fret of the third string. Third finger is way up at the top on the fourth fret of the top string, of the sixth string, and then little finger, underneath, which is kind of a weird shape to initially do, and it's on the fourth uh, string, fourth fret. So I'll go th over the tab for that. Four, nothing on the next string, so you've got to mute that next string. So four, nothing, four, three, zero, two. But you'll hear if you go through those notes, it's nice to pick. That's an example of a chord substitution that's kind of nice to use. You can use it as, you can strum it, or you can do some finger style with it. It's amazing what you can do with just a chord that's coming a bit more nice than a G sharp minor. And so that's what I've found. I've just added uh, extra chords to chords I've already learned. Like my E, I think, oh, I'm sick of doing just E. I'll do a version of it in E major nine, which is, to me, it's not always, but in a lot of cases it sounds nicer and prettier. So that's the way I discover it. I hear a chord, I like it, or I've, I discover something and I add it to my repertoire. If I don't like it, I just don't worry about it. I leave it alone and go, eh, I'm not, probably not going to do that chord again. And it's up to you. It makes the colouring of your chords special. That way if you write a song, you can do it your way. You don't have to do it the way that someone else has done that. Hopefully that helps with that. As far as the riffs go, riffs, it's more of a, if you know your scales and you know how to do um, soloing, then it's up to you to colour it how you want to. Like you can hear notes in your head how you'd like to hear them or make runs like you'd like to make them. Maybe it's a mathematical thing. You're thinking instead of just playing up a scale, I'm going to skip every second string. That kind of thing can work. 
sometimes those sort of ideas can help out. So I hope that helps you, Jordan, and I hope any, anyone else out there that explains some things for you. Now, if you've got a question you'd like me to ask, Fridays is when I'm going to be asking them, uh, answering them, I should say. So what I want you to do is go down to the bottom there in the comments section. If you've got a question you want me to specifically ask, I might even read it out and so the whole YouTube world that is on my channel will get to hear that. And you could be that person. So if that's you, go ahead right away now and write that comment in there and say, oh, this is awesome, Mark, but I've really got this cool question. Let me know what it is. I will do my best best to answer it for you. Otherwise, this is Mark the Guitar Guy signing off and hope you're getting excited about guitar out there, ladies and gents. We'll see you later.